Welcome back to this playlist where we discuss what led to the development of quantum mechanics. On Catalyst University, my name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. The first example we're going to go into of one of the things that led to the development of quantum mechanics is the concept of black body radiation and the ultraviolet catastrophe. Okay? Now, You've actually seen black body radiation. You've probably seen two examples shown here. So go home next time you get home and heat something on the stove or in the oven where you have these little coils, right? And if you heat it up hot enough, they'll actually start to glow red. That's an example of black body radiation. So if something gets to a really high temperature, the individual molecules that comprise that object start to vibrate very fast, and that vibration um, causes the emission of light, and so this appears red. Another example of something that emits black body radiation is the sun, which is the star of our solar system. In fact, the sun is over 5,000 Kelvin. It's actually closer to 6,000, as I understand. And as a result of that, it emits light. And so we could, if we actually, this is actually a real picture of the sun. And so um, we see that it's kind of a reddish orangish color. Um, even the fictitious planet Mustafar from Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, has a ton of lava on it. Lava is also very hot, and as a result of that, the lava itself emits black body radiation, which is why when you see a, the planet Mustafar um, in the movie, it actually appears red when you look at it from space. Okay, so the key is, is when you have molecules that are heated to a very high temperature, very high in thousands of kelvins, the molecules vibrate and they emit light of a particular wavelength. And what you can actually do is you can actually do this experiment. And what you do is, is you get um, a box. It's a black box. Um, it actually doesn't have to be black, although normally they are just for the example's sake. And it has a tiny hole in it. Um, the hole's actually a lot smaller relative to the box than this. This is just so you can see it. And what you do is you heat the box. And the box, the molecules comprising it heat up. They get very hot. And eventually, all those molecules go to thermal equilibrium. So they're all the same temperature, and all the molecules are vibrating. They're vibrating at a particular frequency and a particular wavelength. And the light that comes out of this hole is going to have the same frequency and wavelength as the vibrations of the molecules in the black box. Okay? Okay, so that's black body radiation. That's how you do an experiment like this. Well, there's a problem. In the past, before the development of quantum mechanics at the turn of the, uh, the century in about 1901, before that, they used classical mechanics to model everything, which is really all they had. So this right here is, what is the solar radiation spectrum. This is the radiation of the sun. Uh, the units of the y-axis are irrelevant, but it's basically spectral irradiance. It's basically the degree of, um, of photons that are actually striking an object. And the higher it is on the curve, the more intense it is. Okay? And it turns out that if you actually did this with classical mechanics, classical. What happens is, is you start out fine at high wavelengths, but as you go to low wavelengths, the curve goes up and up and then it just keeps going up. It just predicts that it keeps rising. So if you imagine a curve that keeps going up like this, you still have a pretty low degree of infrared radiation that's hitting the earth and all the people of it. And you got a moderate amount of visible, but if this keeps going up, look what's over here. UV or ultraviolet. So we would be getting cooked in ultraviolet radiation, which doesn't make sense because we also don't observe that. What we observe is something that looks more like this. Okay? And these are actually the equations that are used to model this. This is the rayleigh genes law, and these are the equations for it. This one relates it to wavelength, this one to frequency, but the point is, is in terms of wavelength, the limit of the spectral radiance as if you set the wavelength going to zero, so in other words, as you go left on this curve, the radiance should go to infinity, which really doesn't make sense because that's not what we observe. Here's another picture down here. Here's the classical theory in this gray line. You can see it just keeps going up and up and up at 5,000 Kelvin, and it does that at all temperatures. Here's the actual 5,000 Kelvin spectrum. So what we see is it starts to go up, and then it just hits um, this point, and then it goes back down. This is actually what's observed. 
So what they found is that at low wavelengths, so high frequency, high energy, the Rayleigh genes law doesn't work well at all. It's, it really fails to predict any significant behavior. So what do we do? Well, if a model doesn't work, then we, then we can modify the model or scratch it. Well, along comes a guy named Max Planck, who you've probably heard of. He has a constant named after him, Planck's constant. And what he did is he tried very hard to get a model that fit this data. Okay, these data, 5,000, 4,000, 3,000, the temperature is irrelevant. He just tried to get an equation that modeled this data. And there's only one way that he could do it. Max Planck had to postulate that energy can only take discrete values. Energy cannot actually be a continuum of values. It can only be discrete values. So what he did is he comprised a new equation. The energy is equal to Planck's constant, which is this h, times nu, which is the frequency, and then times n, an integer that can only be like 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. It can't be decimals. It has to be a whole number integer. It has to be one of these. So because this can't be like 1.5 or 2.3 or whatever, energy, therefore, can only take on discrete values. Now this really, at the time, didn't even make sense to him. He only postulated this because it made his model work. And there's always a chance in real life if you do that, you know, you're kind of just grasping at straws and it won't work. But it turns out that he was actually right. And it's a postulate at the time because it wasn't based on any data. It wasn't based on anything that they knew at the time. He only postulated it because it made his data work. That's what a postulate is. It's not something that you can really prove necessarily or that's based on experimental data um, or comes from a formula. It's just something you say and you take on faith because it seems to work. So he constructed a new equation which the spectral density as a function of temperature is all this. And he was only able to get this by assuming that energy was quantized and could only take on discrete values. Okay? And that is that is an amazing thing, because this had never been stated before. It was always assumed that any variable, any parameter in physics, was a continuum. This had been the way since Newton, Maxwell, all the people before him, Charles Augustin de Coulomb, everyone. So he was kind of a, a rebel, a maverick in the sense that he said energy is quantized. This is often stated as the beginning of quantum mechanics. All right, so hopefully this made sense. We're actually going to do a practice problem with black body radiation, and then we're going to go into the second factor that led to the development of quantum mechanics, which is the photoelectric effect.